Hello and welcome. This is Rufalmonger, and this is my tips and tricks guide for Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta. Now, as always, these guides, they're long, right? So there will be timestamps all over the video, so you can skip to whatever sounds interesting to you, as we'll cover basically every aspect of the character from, you know, the baby basics to some more advanced concepts. With all that said here, let's start at the start and let's go over his moveset. Now, moveset wise, the first thing to note before anything else is Gogeta has exactly nothing to be able to compete from full screen. So he has to get his way in. But thankfully, you know what? It works because he has a pretty good way in in that he has quarter circle forward and light medium or heavy lightning hammer, which is this guy right here. And this is air OK as well. So this move, the big thing about it is this. It is completely projectile immune. Uh, I don't even mean like basic key blast bouncing off. It's just straight up invincibility. So it'll go through anything thrown at him. Doesn't matter if it's from the main character. Doesn't matter if it's from assist. Whatever it is, it'll go through it just like it's not there. Very similar to say like coolers down forward and heavy. So if you want in and there's a bunch of garbage in your way, rest assured you just get in all there is to it. The move is also safe on block as well, which helps out a lot so you don't get punished for trying it and getting blocked. Now that said here, the light version, this is this guy right here, not too much to it other than just quick tool. The medium version does have this follow up blast and does wall bounce, although you're not really getting anything outside of the corner. But in the corner, it's an incredibly important combo tool and you'll be using it for almost all of your corner combos. The EX version, now this works everywhere on the screen. So you can get combos wherever you are, so if you're looking for that big damage, and you will get big damage off this, FYI. Um, usually we'll get like 5k, roughly half someone's life with this. And that's before even spending any bar for supers, right? So yeah, it's just a very good tool. And all in all, this is a big part of his tool set. It's a pretty handy thing to have. Next up, we have the Meteor Strike. And this is air okay as well. This is quarter circle back, light, medium, or heavy. And the one big thing to note about this is it's an overhead. So it must be blocked standing. Now, the thing here is this. So the light version, you'll be using a lot as a combo ender, but the medium and EX versions of the move, they are both plus on block. So they're both plus two. So meaning if it gets blocked and you both hit buttons at the exact same time, you as Gogeta will always win. The EX version does start up a bit faster than the medium version, just FYI. So one of the advantages here is for burning a bar, you are getting a faster, less reactable version of the move. So it comes in at 24 frames, which is the exact same here as the universal overhead, although with potentially a lot bigger results and a lot bigger reward, because it is plus on block if it gets blocked, and obviously a lot more damage on hit. We have the bluff Kamehameha, so that's quarter circle forward and S. And you get a big old uh, party favor here. And what this actually is, is a command grab. So just like, you know, a Broly character or something, right? So you cannot defend against it by traditional means. As you can see here, you're blocking and you still get hit. So this to note here specifically, if we look at the frame data, so it comes in at 26 frames. So it's just a little, little bit slower than the average command grab. Uh, most command grabs come in at 24 frames, right? But it's more than fair in my opinion, considering he's got a lot more ways than usual to open people up, which we'll talk about in a bit. So it works out just fine. Also for a command grab, it has pretty decent range, but all things considered, he has a lot of ways to open people up. So an extra two frames, kind of whatever. It's just another tool in the toolbox and the toolbox is pretty big. But yeah, it's always good to have a command grab. Even if it is a couple frames slower, you'll still catch people with it all the time. Don't worry about that. Just a fun tool to have and a fun tool to work with. Next up is Punisher Guard. So it's quarter circle back S. And this is air okay as well. And this is his counter attack. So pretty simple in that regard, I guess. If you get hit and it has to be by a physical hit, not a projectile, so beams, key blasts, you'll be safe, but you won't actually stop anybody. But if you stop a physical hit, you blow them back. And uh, much the same here in the air. Doesn't matter if it hits at the very tip of your toe, as you saw right there, right? If it hits anywhere on you, you will blow them away. Since this move is air okay, one of the handier things to note is it'll stop super dashes in the air, right? He doesn't have any real way to stop super dashes in the air other than being really 
on the ball with timing like a jump light or something. So just being able to be in the air and saying you know what's coming, this is definitely a solid way to stop. And of course, you can vanish it and just do whatever you want to do from there, right? But yeah, overall, strong tool is definitely handy to have it, especially for people to spam Super Dash nonstop, right? It'll give you an option to work with that most people don't have air to air. And of course, on the ground, it's still probably better for, go for your down heavy, but it's still there and having a calendar, especially for people who just won't stop attacking, very good to have. Now, this is an interesting one. So plus energy of justice, this is down, down S. So what this is, is his, uh, for lack of a better term, his dragon punch, right? His invincible reversal. So you cannot be hit when you're doing this because you're hundred percent invincible, just like some other characters in the game. Awesome. The other thing here is every time you do this move, you will always get a Dragon Ball. So if you're the kind of person who's looking for Dragon Balls, like you want to summon Shenron, this Gogeta is basically the best answer you'll ever get. Because every time you do this move, even on whiff, even on whiff, you will get a Dragon Ball every single time, right? So every time you do it, hey, Dragon Ball, and then you can work towards it if that's your goal. And if not, well, it's an Invincible Reversal. Not many people get those. So it's always a very big blessing to have one. And also just to note, it does specifically hit both sides. So if you're ever in a situation where like they go and try to vanish on you or just whatever, it always hits both sides so you don't gotta worry about it, you'll get them just fine. So command normals, he does have a few of them here. First up, let's talk to Saiyan Kick, forward and heavy. So this in and of itself is important already just cause you'll use it a lot for combos. The very high angle it hits at is uh, very, instrumental for a lot of his combo routes, but it does have two possible follow-ups. So once you do forward heavy, if you hit forward and heavy again, you get this guy right here. This is the head crusher, and this is an overhead, must be blocked standing. And then if you hit down forward and heavy instead, off your forward heavy move here, you will instead get this move here. This is the leg breaker, and this is a low. Must be blocked while crouching, right? So immediately you have overhead and you have low. So that's kind of your 50-50. Now, just so you know, they don't hit the exact same time. There's like a six or so frame discrepancy between the two. So it's technically possible to block one than the other just by like holding up then down and catching both. But as we'll go into later in the video, there's some other stuff we can do here. But the one really strong thing about both of these is they get follow-ups in and of themselves. So you get full combos if they connect, which is really handy to say the least, right? So if you get that mix up, you get that hit, you just don't settle for just the hit, right? You actually will get a proper follow-up and a proper sequence and just some real damage in. So it's a really big reward for getting the hit in. Uh, not the least of which I mentioned, by the way, both hits here, negative five and negative two, are both completely safe on block. So if your big old 50-50 gets uh, dealt with, well then whatever. Like you might lose your turn, but you're not losing your life. Forward and S, finish sign here. That is our level up mechanic, and we'll talk more about it later in the video as it's just gonna get its own section as it's kind of a big deal. As for supers, he only has the one level one ultimate impact, which is this guy right here. Uh, it is fairly versatile though. Uh, one thing to know here, it's air okay, but the animation is different depending on whether you do the air version or the ground version. So that was the ground version. And if we do the air version, he'll instead end with his dive kick. But the thing here is this, the ground version will always switch sides the air version will always maintain the same side. So if you want to move the opponent around however you so wish, keep it in mind, because sometimes you do want to switch sides, sometimes you don't. So the animation startup is like basically the exact same either way. So just keep it in mind which way you want to keep it up. The damage for the move is below average at the end of a combo, but it does benefit from the level up mechanic, so that kind of balances itself out. Now, level three, we have two different versions. We have the Ultra Big Bang Kamehameha, which is this guy here, and honestly, all things being equal, it's a fairly standard beam super. Uh, it is air okay, though, just so you know. But yeah, you get the hits in, hard knockdown, fantastic, all that kind of stuff, but nothing much more to it than that. Now, if you are at level seven specifically, and you have to be level seven, otherwise this won't work, you do unlock the 100 times Big Bang Kamehameha. And what that is, is death. You die, end of story. 
If it connects at all, you lost the character. That's the whole gimmick. So it does require setup in that it needs to be level 7. So you're going to have to be doing that taunt, right? And uh, there's multiple ways around it, sure. But you got to get those taunts in to build those levels. And then at that point, once you have level 7 available, then this move unlocks. It is a separate move. The motion is the same, but you have to hit different buttons. But, yeah, that's the big thing. So, obviously, a lot more impressive than the normal level 3, but there is the whole thing you got to do to get to it. And once you burn through it, you will have to level up all over again, so it's not permanently unlocked. But it does basically turn just about any touch into a dead character. So, effectively, I guess you could say it's like one of the core conceits of Gogeta. So, let's talk his assist. Assist obviously important for every single character in the game. Uh, his A assist is his level up mechanic so he can build up levels every time you do it although keep in mind he can only go to level five so once you hit level five that's as far as you are going cannot go any further uh my assumption is the developers don't want an instant kill ready to go gogeta just before he even enters the ring right so level five is the cap now just like the regular move it does build meter Although this one builds a half bar, as you can see here. So look at the meter below. And in two calls of the assist, we have a full meter. So that is much more meter gain than you normally get, just so you know. So if you are in the market for a meter gain assist, well, this isn't going to get you the most meter, especially, you know, compared to, like, say, uh, base Goku, right? It does give you level ups, and level ups are kind of a big deal. So it's an option. His B assist is the lightning hammer. And this is the light version of the move here. So it works much the same as the base lightning hammer does. So in that is indeed projectile immune. So he can blow through whatever. It doesn't particularly matter. He'll get there just fine. The problem is kind of right there. It's a range issue, right? So he can successfully go through it and maybe not show up on the other end. Uh, but that said... Startup is decent for what it is. It does pop people up similar, like, say, hits A assist. So it's pretty easy to follow up and get whatever combo ability you want to get. It's reasonable block stun at 33 frames. Just a pinch higher than average. But overall, legitimately, it's not the most impressive assist in the world. Uh, but it works if that's what you want. And his C assist is his invincible reversal. So the thing here is this, as a C assist, not the most impressive, it doesn't track in the air or anything, it's like purely ground and move, but it does get you that Dragon Ball, just like the regular version of the move. So if you're really dedicated to like building a team around getting Dragon Balls, well then this will definitely help out as every time he goes for it, he will get you a Dragon Ball on top of you know, the usual C assist stuff and dumping them right out in front of you, that kind of stuff. So it works out great in that regard. Although all said and done, Gogeta won't be remembered as a character with a great assist, to be fully real. Uh, but that's not why you're picking him. Like, you're picking him for a lot of the insanity and the pressure and, you know, the big old fancy instant kill. You're not picking Gogeta to be, like, the ultimate support character to be all the way real. So his assists may be not the best, but they're certainly workable. Um, it really depends on what you want to go with. Each one offers you a different path. Either A assist if you want to really You're focus on the level ups, C assist if you want to focus on the Dragon Balls, and the B assist is an all right combo extender pressure tool. Okay, so now let's talk leveling up. So leveling energy. up is simple to do, really. Just hit forward and S. And every time you do it, you level up, right? And the things are this. One, you get the level up, and two, you get roughly 10% of a bar. And that will go up once you are level 7. At level 7, the bar gain exponentially goes up. It's not like a half bar each time, but it's certainly a lot more than 10% of the base level. So you still have some reward for doing it, other than just the level ups if you're already capped out. As gone over in the assist section as well, his A assist also levels up, and it gains you a lot more meter. It gains you 50% of a meter. However, the level ups are capped, so you cannot go higher than level 5. Now, if he already is higher than level 5 when you call the assist, then sure, whatever. He'll stay at that level. Like, that's not going to change. But you can't go higher than level 5. There's no free road to level 7 before he gets into the ring. 
And of course, at level seven, what does that unlock? Well, that unlocks the instant kill. That's great, we'll talk about that more in a bit, but that's, that's the obvious thing, right? You don't need to stress too much. If you get the hit, you kill the character, really all there is to it. But there is more to the levels than just that. For your normal level one and level three super, every level up is simply additional damage. You will cash out once it's done. So if you're say level five and you do a level one super, at the end of that super, you're back to level zero and you'll have to level up all over again. But each additional level is more damage. So let me show you in a basic combo here. So before the super, 4,175 damage, right? And after the super, 4,929. So when it's all said and done, it's 754 damage at minimum scaling, right? It's the least it can do after a long combo. And honestly, that's kind of below average. But if we add a single level up, all of a sudden our damage is going to go up here. So 4,929, new total, 4,983. So a little bit more than 50 damage in the end. And every single time you add a level up, doesn't matter how many it is, each one of those is just a little bit over 50 damage. And it works just the same here for the level three as well. So effectively your minimum damage will go up the higher your levels are, which is great. So you can just get that little bit extra damage in. Like your level one super at level seven does well over a thousand damage, which it puts it out of the range of people like Tien's Tri-Beam which is like normally, you know, the higher end of level one minimum damage, but Gogeta can beat it at max level. So it's not just unlocking the instant kill super. It's making sure you have more reach with your level one super, or level three super to finish off an enemy, giving you much more higher than average minimum damages. Like I know it's not as sexy or as cool as the big flashy instant kill, but just keep in mind, more damage is more damage. Like it's as simple as that. And you can kill now in combos that you might not otherwise have been able to. Now to talk about the big old kill combo. The thing to note here in and of itself is it's really slow compared to a normal level 3. So if you just do it in a normal combo situation, the enemy will have time to wake up and block. Simple as that. And then you kind of burned all your resource for, well, nothing. So you have to do a little bit more. But thankfully, a little bit more is just, it's just that. It's just a little bit more. You actually don't have to put that much more effort in. You just can't do the bog standard usual combo ender. So I'm talking, it could be like literally any lightning hammer. Okay, boom, you got it. Dead character, done. Uh, it can be anything off of Vanish. You do the Vanish, go for the instant kill, done, good. Uh, so many assists. All you do is just have the assists, hold them in place for a split second. You're good to go, done. How about a command grab? Sure, why not? Got plenty of time. You'll blow them away. Uh, just anything more than just the absolute minimum basic. You just need a little bit more hit stun is what I'm trying to say. Uh, it is very easy and honestly trivial to get it, but just keep in mind that is the thing. <laughs> you can't just go launch, you know, ABC, spike them down, go for it. That is the one thing basically that won't work. But everything else with just even a little bit more hit stun will work. Okay, so now it's time to talk about a single normal. One normal, that's it. And we're talking stand M. So there's been so many jokes of like XYZ of the gods over the years of Dragon Ball Fighters. And this is the stand M of the gods. Because at nine frames, this move has insane range. A lot of people talk about, hey, adult Gohan, adult Gohan, his uh, stand M, that's nine frames, right? Well, uh, let's uh, put her to the test here. So, Adult Gohan, how far can you go? Oh. Gogeta, how far can you go? Oh. In fact, Gogeta, take a step back. Can you still hit? Yep. So, yeah, people talk about the nine framer for Adult Gohan, but it simply doesn't match up. <laughs> so, uh, that's about it. And uh, if it hits at the absolute tip, it's into its active frame, so it's no longer nine frame move. So yeah, it's certainly not a bad move, but compared to Gogeta, well, it's crap. Let's bring in freaking Cooler. Cooler is like the king of the big normals, right? 
That's literally Cooler's identity as a character is I'm the guy with the big normals. So Cooler, let's look at your stand M. Oh. And by the way, his stand M is slower than nine frames and doesn't even reach. When Gogeta, yeah, Gogeta can reach, right? Uh, what about Cooler's down M, the big old sweep? That's awesome, right? Uh, and this comes in, you know, what, like it's like 14 frames, something like that. Yeah, Gogeta hits from that far away. So it does go into the active frames at that point a bit, but he can still hit basically as far away as like one of the King Kong normals of the game, Cooler Down M. So I'm trying to impress upon you just how stupidly good this move is because it's stupidly good. Now, Dragon Ball being Dragon Ball, there's always like, you know, a lot of considerations for being airborne and all that kind of stuff, right? But all said and done, man, this move is hard to contest. Basically, if you're on the ground, you are going to be at a disadvantage against Gogeta. And if you are Gogeta, then abuse the heck out of it. Now, a thing to note, the usual thing you do as well, if I'm going to do this to poke with, right, then MM. Uh, down medium in and of itself is not really that safe on block. Now, you can go immediately into uh, Key Blast, which has a lot of pushback, which is great. Uh, negative 7 with pushback, so you're pretty okay. But you can also just go M into Key Blast. Like, maybe you'll get a little bit less damage, but you'll be a lot safer overall. Because uh, that Key Blast, you know, something Super Dash and all that kind of stuff. If they see it coming. And there's just a lot more time to mentally react to MMS than it is to MS. And if you get a hit, you can still Super Dash or, uh, depending on the range, stand heavy, all that kind of stuff. But just basically beware, right? It's an amazing tool. But the thing is, the buttons that follow up from it are not as good as that button. So just watch your combo structure on that because the buttons you press might get you killed on block that said don't let me dissuade you this button is simply put one of the best normals in all of the game's history so let's talk one of gogeta's core conceits he can break the game because he can air dash twice other characters can't do that unless you're golden frieza and well you don't want to be golden frieza right so uh, Gogeta, effectively the only real character that can do this. So, in and of itself, it's kind of that cut and dry. I can just back dash twice, I can forward dash twice. Uh, he's a character that's allowed to double jump and then still air dash. That is normally not allowed, so if I take control of the other Gogeta here, if I double jump here, I can hit forward and mash forward all I want. I will never get that dash. You can either air dash or double jump. You don't get to do both. Although, with Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta, you totally do. So that is a very strong part of the character and also very core to a lot of his pressure as we'll go on later in the video. But if you're already in the air and you jump cancel and move on block, which is something anyone can do, right? Like I can do this here with uh, other Gogeta as well. You can jump cancel and move on block, but then that means you double jumped. So for everyone else, that means that's it. You jump, you're done. But since Gogeta can still maintain his dash, that means he can do stuff like that, right? So mid-screen and in the corner, that's kind of a big deal. And once again, that'll get its own section. But yeah, his general air mobility is simply put unmatched due to this. Because he can just do so much more in the air than a normal character. And this also bleeds into his offense. Not much more to say to it than that right now. But if you didn't know, hey, you need to know because it's an important deal. Just a quick note on combo structure for Gogeta. As I see a lot of people get confused, they don't understand how stuff like this works. First and foremost, anything like this here, what you need to do is light, medium, and heavy into S into your wheel kick. Uh, if you actually just do like LLL, like a lot of people do, your height will actually be wrong. So just a quick example here. It'll just whiff, right? Because you're doing LLL, the auto combo, it'll try to maintain height. And the height is everything for this. So if you're not a very core specific height, you'll never get the S to connect. And if you don't get the S to connect, you don't get the wheel kick. So just keep in mind, you got to do light, medium, heavy, and not just LLL. And secondly, once again here, height is everything. So you need to be hyper specific heights for these kind of combos to work. So right there, just did basic down M, stand M, jump MLL, then LMH, S, wheel kick, right? Fantastic. If I omit even one button from that. Whiff. Not gonna work, right? 
So when you're tailoring combos, just keep in mind, you gotta mess around and see what works because a lot of the times you need to be a very specific height versus the enemy to make sure this works. Uh, that said specifically, the height that works is this. When you're doing your final jump into uh, LMHS, into the wheel kick, uh, just make sure you are as low to the enemy as possible. So it can be that basic example shown, or it could be something a little bit more advanced like this here. But the core concept is you want to be fairly low to the enemy's feet when you're doing it. So when you jump up and do the final LMHS, then it'll have enough height to bounce them just specifically off your air S into the wheel kick, and then you're good to go. Now, you can do different combos. You don't have to do this specific combo. It's more damaging, yes, but it's not like wildly so much more so that if you find this concept difficult, then you have to do it. But just keep in mind, that's kind of the rough outline how it works. So something on the easier side, let's take a look at this auto combo. So if you struggle with combos, all that kind of stuff, well, hey, I got an answer for you, eh? Uh, so his auto combo, it switches sides. And if you're not aware, auto combos have a bit of a wall bounce property. Uh, something that moves uh, do not have by themselves normally. It's usually not a big deal in the history of the game. I can only ever think of it mattering for like... Nappa way many patches ago when he worked a lot different and I guess certain Android 21 combos in the corner But it's usually not a thing right but for Gogeta This wall bounce specifically here since it recorners you because it switches sides if you're already in the corner You can just combo from it, right? Uh, and of course one of the things you can combo from it is just the auto combo again And you can just keep going uh, You don't get the wall bounce the second time around, but yeah, so suffice to say, very, very silly. If you don't want to work on your harder uh, conversions to get out of the corner, you know, something like this, like that, right? Um, just smash L and it'll totally work. Uh, in fact, it does pretty respectable damage for what it is too, all things considered. Uh, it's a side switcher. Usually you lose a lot of damage in a side switcher, but it's still pretty good. It'll be well over 3k damage. So yeah, just sometimes it's best just to turn your brain off and just start mashing. Because for Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta, it will be rewarded, as you can see here. So let's talk the Gogeta Blender. So when the enemy blocks forward heavy, they're immediately putting themselves in a little bit of a mix-up of overhead, low, or command throw, right? Uh, but here's the dark secret of all that. After you see that forward heavy, you just hold up back and you'll jump block the overhead. You'll completely avoid the low and you'll completely avoid the command grab, right? So the thing is by himself, he doesn't actually give you much of a mix up. Now, you can't jump out of forward heavy into heavy. That's fine. Although, that move's not safe on blocking after doing key blast. Right afterwards, which is, uh, has its own issues, right? But in and of itself, you can actually just jump out of all this stuff. But if you were to bring in an assist, then all of a sudden, things start getting a lot more real. Now, with that assist covering my block stun, turns out all of a sudden, I can't just hold up back anymore when that follow-up is coming. So now that I'm kind of held in place, as it were, I got to start paying a lot more attention to what's going on. Now that said, you can still correctly guess, right? Like, I just correctly guessed there, fine. But you can no longer just up back your worries away. And once the assist comes into play and you know you can't just hold up back anymore, then all of a sudden, you know, a lot more of the options start, you know, getting a lot more scary, right? So... Just to let you know how that basic mix goes, uh, but it is a lot better off with an assist to back you up because by itself, it is kind of fake. And the uh, thing is, of course, you know, if, if you don't know it's fake, if you don't know anything's fake, then it's real. It's real until you know it's fake, right? But yeah, so this is fake by itself-ish, unless you want to come into some unsafe options. But as soon as you bring in an assist, the enemy just kind of has to guess. Now that said as well here, you can also start tossing in things like uh, somersault kicks uh, to throw in the overhead low timing because 
technically, once we know the frame data, the overhead will always strike before the low will, right? So we can just always go, uh, you know, hold back and then hold down back and then we're safe. But if you start introducing other elements like the overheads, then all of a sudden, maybe not so much, right? And besides the command grab, you can also just let it rock and merely go for a dragon rush or let it rock and then go for it again. Uh, there's a lot more layers to it. That's just the most basic start. And I'll let you kind of build from there. But yeah, just so you know. Also, another quick note here. Assists with exceptional block stun, like much higher than average, those will overwrite the uh, time to be able to be command grabbed because they'll still be in block stun by the time the command grab hits. So just beware. Like, it's still fine for the base mix-up in and of itself here. But... Just beware if you want to use the command grab or even a dragon rush, some of the more exceptionally long block stun assists, that will kind of remove that ability for you because it'll still be in block stun and that won't help you out. So average or lower than average block stun is what you want to be looking for. All right, for our next section, we're going to be talking about pressure. And Gogeta, thanks to the fact he has the multiple air dashes, he's got some, to say the least, right? Uh, the big thing about this style of pressure is it's all on the back of the fact that he can do a jump normal, jump again when it's blocked, and then after that jump, air dash afterwards. So it creates basically a nice little 50-50 setup. So what we're going to do here in this specific example is we're just going to do the old super dash. So we're going to super dash first to just give us some height uh, as the height that the super dash leaves us at on block is basically perfect for what we need. Now, first and foremost, it is very and highly advisable to have an assist with you when you do this. As after the super dash and you go for a uh, medium or whatever, the enemy simply, they can just down heavy you out of it. So yeah, right there, as you can see, right? So that's kind of the building block of all of our pressure here. So make sure you have an assist to keep them in block stun after the initial super dash and then from that point on then it's all gravy it'll take care of itself but if you want to risk it you can just keep in mind if the enemy knows what's up they can definitely just down heavy out of it so what's the crux of this mix up well it's pretty simple so you super dash once again leaving you at the height we want to be at and then hit m to just hold them in place and then either after the m you just go for a down m right so that is a low or after the M, you jump cancel, which you're allowed to do, and because you're Gogeta, you can then instant air dash after the jump cancel and then go for more overhead follow-ups. So once again, low, or you go for a triple overhead, LML. So the enemy has to correctly block and get one wrong, and then it is combo time. So what makes this strong is this. So after that super dash M, I'm going to try to crouch block to get rid of the low, right? And ideally, well, then it should go over my head, the instant air dash option, right? Oh, no, not at all, it turns out. So just like the classic fuzzy setups of old, right? Uh, and this setup, since it's so tight, uh, you cannot return to crouching in time to stop it. Now, it'll let you not stand block, right? Because you're getting hit overhead. But uh, in this option, you actually just have to block high so that is kind of the big deal here now granted yes if you go for the down m option that's certainly not as fast as other characters like low hitting down lights right but the thing is here between the air dash and the follow-ups and the down m if it's done perfectly uh timed there's only one frame differential so you cannot successfully block both just by fuzzy guarding it right you have to kind of guess now if you're one of those superhumans and you can definitely get it every time when they just land, then whatever, congratulations to you. But then you also got hit when, you know, I just did this and did a Dragon Rush follow-up or a Command Grab instead, right? So there's a lot of variations, and just because you get rid of uh, Rep 1 doesn't mean you're out of dodge just yet. But once again here, simple as this. You Super Dash. Ideally, you have an assist after the Super Dash to cover the block stun. Then just hit Jump M to hold him in place. And then after that Jump M, you go for the low. Or you go for the multiple overheads. Uh, depending on your timing, you might not get the third hit of the L, but it's not the end of the world. 
as the M has more hit stun anyways, so it works out just fine either way. Uh, but yeah, so very simple but very strong pressure for Gogeta. Now let's talk Okazeme post knockdown pressure. So the first thing before I get into anything else is this. When you get a knockdown, and it does not matter what kind of knockdown it is, just as long as you got the knockdown, gain a level or two. Once again, level gains for Gogeta kind of a big deal, right? So, uh, you know, you could go for XYZ setup, sure, but like in the time it takes for them to get back up, you can gain two levels. So just keep it in mind, it is not nothing. That instant kill for Gogeta is an incredibly reasonable thing to get in an actual match. This isn't some impossible Magical Wonderland scenario, right? This is the real deal and you can get it. So just before anything else, you know, you can sacrifice some of your pressure to get a couple level ups in. And that could be the difference between winning or losing right there. So now for some more traditional Okazami. So do whatever combo you're gonna do. The combo itself, like it's whatever, just do what works for you, right? And at that point, do this and do your aerial, specifically aerial level one super, not the ground version. And it's gonna leave you with exactly the right amount of distance to work with in the corner that you can do basically your medium flip kick. And what does that get you? Well, for one, if it is blocked, right? Keep in mind, it's plus on block, right? So that's fantastic. And in any scenario here where you get it and you get that knockdown, uh, you follow up and either you're going to get the hit, which is certainly all well and good, right? Or you get to be plus. And here's some of the really key things about it. So let's look at layer one here. So if we hit, awesome, we hit. Great, right? Uh, if they block, awesome, we're plus. Uh, things like if they try to up tech and immediately jump, which can beat a lot of Oki options. A lot of OP options uh, you normally don't think get beat, well, they can, and this, no. It'll still hit high up enough that it doesn't matter, even if they up tech and jump right away, it'll catch them just fine. Now, we do run into a couple prongs. If they're passive, whatever, fantastic, we just blender them, right? But if they do things like, say, wake, uh, wake up Vanish, just match Vanish on Wake Up. The thing about that is, it's gonna work. Same thing with Wake Up Down Heavy and some of those other options, Wake Up Reflect. But there's a way around it. So if we do everything the same here, except we're going to do quarter circle back light instead of quarter circle back medium. It's going to work out in our favor pretty good here. Because all of a sudden, stuff like that wake up vanish, we can now recover in time and crush it. Things like wake up down heavy, we can now block in time. Things like wake up reflect. Wake up reflect. Oh, it turns out we fall up a little bit short. And if I catch you reflecting, well, guess what, buddy? Dragon Rush time, right? So it's certainly not a flawless uh, Oki setup, but it's pretty decent for what it is. Against passive people, it's always your turn because you'll smack them just fine out of the air or whatever, doesn't matter. And against people who want to be tricky, then you have the option to be tricky yourself and do the light version, which recovers faster. And, well, more importantly, also just comes up a little bit short. And it just gives you the option to punish whatever they're trying to get out with. And uh, for your information, the light version also is a safe jump. Medium, not so much. You will get hit if you do the medium. If you think they're gonna try anything defensively, just go for the light version, see what happens. For the most part, it's all gonna be reactable and you can get it. And if they're gonna be any kind of passive, well, then you just honk them with the uh, medium version and go for it. It's definitely a player read. What about after a level three? Pretty easy. If you're in the corner, all you gotta do, hold up. That simple. Hold up. And right before you land, hit medium, and you'll beat them. And it crushes everything. No down heavies, no vanishes. Safe jump level three. Basic as basic gets. Mid screen, all you gotta do is just do a little bit of a tiny run, then jump. Same deal as well. So that just crushed a wake up down heavy, right? So either way, the basic pressure is, well, it's basic but strong, right? You can always get in your jump medium no matter what. If they try to struggle against it in any way, shape, or form, they either get hit or if they do a wake-up invincible uh, move, then you get to block it in time because it's a safe jump. That part is easy peasy. Now, of course, that's not really a mix-up in and of itself. It's a very safe option to be sure, but uh, we can also go back to what we showed earlier in the video. In that if you know what's going to be blocked, you can then jump cancel that medium and just immediately 
uh, go into more overhead pressure, all that kind of stuff. Or, of course, you know, land, go for the medium as well, down medium, that is. But yeah, so those options are still available to you, uh, especially in the corner. Mid screen, what you can do is basically do it and then, like, instant air dash over the head, hit him on the other side. Or conversely, do it and go for a fake version. You can either do, like, jump ass or just a super dash or mix and mash it too. So you have those options available to you either way. So you can do the basic and then just, you know, land, buttons, all that kind of stuff. Or you can get a bit more tricky. Now, to talk a general game plan slash where to put him on a team. First up, let's talk the team building here. So the team building, one core concept is how much do you care about the level building and the instant kill, right? Because that informs a lot. Because you can put him up point with a lot of assists to work with. And yeah, then you'll have a lot more opportunities to level up. That's one way to do it. Or you can slap him in the back and run him with the A assist. And all of a sudden, you'll be able to get you meter. And yeah, he can't go to level seven, sure. But over the course of the game, he'll definitely get you to level five. And even as an anchor, well, even if he's last character and there's a lot of pressure coming his way, it should be mildly trivial to get those last two level ups in. All you gotta do is get any hit in, knock him down, you know, don't get any proper Oki, sure, whatever. But you'll get those level ups and then you're good to go and your next touch is the touch of death, right? So it's less about team building where he should go, just XYZ, and more what you expect out of him, right? So you can be point, you can be anchor both and get the level up uh, shtick going. That's on you to how to build that team. But if you're just taking him as he is without that, then I believe he should be a point character when you don't factor in the level up stuff. As a point character, once again, his mobility is you know, best in class for the most part, right? You can do a lot to work, uh, just moving around. And the thing is, as a point, you don't got to rely on those assists. Uh, because once again, I think his assist game, while it's not like unworkable, it is certainly not the best. Now, if you are aiming for that DOD, right? The meter gain assist, sure, whatever. It'll help you get where you're going on that front. But that said, his B assist... There's a lot of assists like that that do a lot better than that. And the C assist, unless you really want those Dragon Balls, it is a substandard C assist, all things said and done. So when it comes to team building, then in the nutshell, if you want to level up, your imagination's your limit. And if you just want him for the offense he brings to the table, then I would say probably a point character. Now, as a character, that mobility, once again, is ultra key. And yes, he has no full screen presence. He just can't do it, right? So he can technically get zoned out, but the thing is, there's only a very small handful of characters that can realistically do that, because Dragon Ball Fighters being Dragon Ball Fighters, not a lot of characters with a lot of great ranged options. So that all said, it's not too difficult to get to the mid-range, and once you get to the mid-range, well, then he's got a million and a half ways in. You can either hoof it in the old-fashioned way, or Lightning Hammer literally goes through everything just like Cooler, and he does not have to care too much. Now, it's not frame one, as you can see there. You can be counter hit out of it, but for the most part, it's going to be a non-issue. Also, the reward he gets off the X-Lightning Hammer is substantial, to say the least. Like, that's over 5,000. We haven't even put a super in there yet, right? So, you can easily kill characters off EX lightning Hammer if you get it. So, don't be afraid. This is definitely... One of those moves, it's okay to burn the bar on because the reward, it's safe on block to begin with, right? So the reward is immense. Other than that, just rush in and do stuff. You know, uh, a lot of stuff we already covered in the video. He's got a lot of canned mix-up stuff. He's just got a lot of good pressure. He's got a command grab built in, so he always got that on the table. Just get in and pressure, pressure, pressure. He is just definitely rush down the character. And that's about it for Gogeta, and that is the video. As a character, I think he's very successful at what he wants to do. He is not the full screen demon, to be sure. He wants to get in and wreck your face, and he has all the options to do that with. So don't worry about that. Um, as far as uh, a character in Dragon Ball Fighters, he might be the last one. I guess time will tell. But if he is the last one, he's a pretty dang decent one to go out on. So that's all good. And other than that, my friends, hey, we're at the end of the video. So thank you very much for watching. Hope this video has found you well. Go out and play some Dragon Ball.